With us now, Rashir Sharma, Rockefeller International founder and CIO. Rashir, it's great to speak with you today. Uh, and I think we start the conversation right there. When we talk about this mini miracle, what are we talking about? Why is it fleeting? Well, I think that first we have to acknowledge the fact that at this time last year, most economists for the first time in history were predicting that America would have a recession. Um, why I say first time in history is because economists have never predicted a recession as a consensus. So we had that prediction at this time last year. Instead, what we ended up with was economic growth, which in this quarter could top 3%. And we have never had a period in history where the gap between the consensus and in terms of what's turned out to be um, as far as economic performance is concerned of America has been this large. So first, let's acknowledge that that we've had the, something really, nothing short of a mini economic miracle as far as America is concerned. But if you look at the reasons why that's happened, a lot of those reasons may really be fleeting. Uh, the biggest one, of course, has to do with the massive fiscal stimulus, which has been discussed a lot, that no one anticipated that the fiscal stimulus would be so huge. And then, of course, the consumer has ended up being much more resilient here in America compared to U uh, Europe or Japan, where a lot of the excess savings are still there. But in America, they really run down the excess savings, and that has given a big lift to the economy out here. So it raises the question, and, and to be clear, there's always typically a divide between forecasts and reality when it comes to the economy. But the fact that that divide's been so wide this time around, does it, does it mean that the economic modeling has to be thought about differently, done differently? In some ways, yes, because I think that uh, what a lot of us have not taken into account is how the financing structure has shifted uh, in America. What do I mean by that? Well, a lot of financing now is either in the private markets or, of course, as far as the consumer is concerned, it's much more locked into long-term financing out there. So, in fact, as someone put it, that the American consumer now uh, finances long and yet invests short with so much in uh, short-term deposits. But if you just look at the whole structure out here, which is that it takes much longer, I think, for monetary policy to have an effect under this structure. So typically, it would take about 18 months when you would start to see monetary policy have a serious effect. This time, the monetary policy tightening has been even greater. But I think the effect could be even longer, given just how much is now done in the private markets and how much of this is long-term financing. So some of that uh, is that. Having said that, I think that I'd be a bit cautious from here onwards because I just feel this fiscal spending has been out of control. We have never seen fiscal spending of this magnitude in America. And I think that that is bound to taper from here. And that, I think, could be a big drag for economic growth going ahead, especially because this time interest rates are unlikely to come down much when economic growth weakens. So you're not going to have much of a counter effect to this uh, tapering of fiscal stimulus over the next few quarters. Are you arguing, Rushir, would you go so far as to argue that the reshoring effort and the cost associated with it was a mistake? Yeah, I think that in terms of just what's being spent as a mistake, Carl, let me just uh, consider this, that America ran budget deficits of about 3% of GDP for much of the last decade. That was in line with other developed countries. What are we doing here now? We are running a fiscal deficit or a budget deficit now of 6% of GDP. It's running over 8% for this year, but the trend rate is about 6% for the next few years, the CBO projects. That is a staggering number, which no other developed country is currently running. So we have really taken our uh, privilege as being the world's reserve currency to another level here now by running fiscal deficits and expecting the world to finance that for a long period of time. And it's quite possible the bond market, uh, after a long time, is beginning to get worried about that. And so therefore, you're seeing higher rail rates across the curve.